um, just a lot of excitement. Um, on top of that, I, I feel honored to be sitting here. Paul, thank you so much for holding it down in Sydney as the last ambassador. Um, nobody better to take that baton from. And I really feel like you're probably gonna hear me say this a lot today. Women's basketball is at a really exciting moment. It's, it's pivotal and no better way to you know, continue, not as a player anymore, but as a former player, than to be sitting here as an ambassador to help continue to grow that game and, and, and really ride that wave that is women's basketball right now. It's so exciting to hear you speak like that. Of course, you've had so many wonderful opportunities to play for your country. This is just another space to be able to do that. What does it feel like? Share with us in the room what that feels like being able to represent your country. There's really nothing like it. Um, you know, I always like to answer this question. I've gotten it a couple times with a little bit of a story. and It's, it's, it's a pretty quick one. Um, in one of my first Olympics, the Athens Olympics, winning a gold medal, flying home, I really realized what it was to represent your country because on the plane ride back to Seattle, one of the flight attendants came up to me and was like, hey, do you have your medal? And I was like, well, yeah. You know, you don't check that. You know, it's always in your carry-on. And before I knew it, she was asking me if the pilot could see it. And all of a sudden, the medal is getting passed up and down the aisle. Everybody just wanted to touch it, to see it. And I think what's really, you know, symptomatic about that moment is when you're representing your country, it's not just you. It's not just, you know, a team or a city. It is the entire thing. And it really hit me in that moment. And I was, you know, very fortunate enough to be in five World Cups, to also have that feeling with USA on my chest. A bunch of different qualifiers in the in-between, and then of course five Olympics. Um, so it's really special. Never took that moment for granted. And again, now in this seat, I get to have impact in a different way. Uh, hi, Sue. Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe here. Obviously, like the last uh, couple of years, you've seen extraordinary growth in the WNBA and NCAA women's basketball. So the American growth is looking great. What can we do to sort of replicate that across the world in places like Europe, so that like this World Cup can really resonate with more young people uh, around the world? Um, there's a lot of directions to go with that question. I think the way I try to view it is it's not WNBA and then FIBA. And Europe's over here and Australia's, it's not. It's one, it's a global game. And I think when one grows, it's only gonna help the other and vice versa. Something that I just thought about, you know, listening to Paul talk about Lauren Jackson is women's sports, women's basketball, we have stories. There's so many incredible stories. And a lot of times those just haven't had the chance to be told. And I think a big part of what made that Sydney World Cup so special was Lauren's story, amongst others for sure. But for, for her in that moment, I mean, how special for everyone to hear that. I think that's how, you know, that's how you build a fan base, that's how you build viewership. It's so people can feel directly connected. So I think one, one part, there's many parts, but one part can be telling more of the player's stories. I think there's been a lack of that um, in women's sports in general, to be honest. Thanks, Sue. No being together can, can always get you a little further. Being collaborative is always gonna get you a little further. Um, I'm sure you guys experience that in your own workplaces. And that's where I, I really mean that. What, what you know, it's not the WBA over here, Eve over there. It's not. It needs to be one team, for lack of a better. And I think when when those things, and, and hopefully I can help be somebody that can bridge those gaps. And when 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 that's happening, it touches back on what I said before about opportunity. I think um, you know you mentioned some great players, and the beauty of what's happening now with social media. Those types of players are you're able to see them. Other other countries that don't necessarily have, you know, whatever TV station the game is on, they can't see that in their country. They get to tap into social media and follow those players and become fans. And that's where fan bases start. Um, for me, in, in you know my retirement season, God, the amount of international fans that came over to Seattle blew me away. Like people just and I was like, how do you even how do you even see me play ever? You know, but they were able to find ways to do that. And I think that really spoke volumes in, 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 in a lot of ways because for men's basketball, they've been doing that. They've had those opportunities in other ways. And for women, we're just starting to figure that out. It's exciting. Congratulations on this. Have you given any thought to how unusual or challenging it might be to see someone else wear number six in 24 <laughs> and 26? Um, no. No, I haven't. Um, I think the beauty of playing a 20-year career, a 20-year professional career, is you know you did as much as you could. You left it all, there's nothing left. And I feel really passionate about 
um, or I felt really passionate as a player trying to leave my mark, right? Whether it was with wins, um, impacting a team, you know, hopefully a country, and now as a former player, um, I feel just as passionate about continuing that. And, and that means there's gonna be another number six. Um, that means somebody's probably gonna play more World Cups than me. But that's the point, right? That's the point. It's to continue to promote, to grow, to elevate the game. So there's some little girl out there right now who maybe, you know, sees you know, any of the teams really, but obviously for me, the U.S. team, um, and can dream, and can have that dream. And then again, try to exceed it. One quick follow piece you mentioned this is a very exciting time for women's basketball yeah. today, especially at home. Would you mind maybe having the MVP race, the three people that are head and shoulders above everybody else right now? If you would, if uh, in the WNBA? Yes. <laughs> well, I always start by saying I have major bias, so my answer will probably forever be Brianna Stewart. <laughs>